So as bass fishermen, what is the one type of bass that we always dread whenever we get out on a lake? They're usually the biggest and they're usually the hardest to catch and we run into them over and over and over again. That's going to be suspended bass. I know that's a word we all dread, suspended. When those fish get away from the bank, when those fish get off the bottom, and they're just out there roaming, chasing bait fish, those can be some of the absolute toughest fish to catch over the entire year. And we don't really run into them in the spring or in the fall, but in the summertime, in the winter, and early in the fall, that is one of the biggest problems that we face. Those fish get out there, they're cruising around, and they are almost impossible to catch. And they used to be nearly impossible to catch. Luckily, thanks to forward-facing sonar, that has absolutely changed the game and introduced one of the greatest baits ever invented to catch suspended fish, and that is a Demiki rig. So not that long ago, it used to be just down imaging and even side imaging was just coming out and you could sort of kind of see suspended fish. On down imaging you could see when they were right below you but that was about it. You couldn't tell where they were other than that and you had to really land on them in order to catch those suspended fish. Now with the introduction of forward facing sonar between Garmin, Hummingbird, Lowrance, everybody has it now, you can see where those fish are at in the water column up to like 120 feet away which is absolutely mind boggling. Whenever I tell my friends and my family about this don't fish they always call it cheating and it might seem like that sometimes but it has truly changed the game and opened our possibilities up to almost endless to being able to see where these fish are at it's not enough just to see them though we have to figure out how to catch them as anglers and there's a few different baits that work but probably none better than that Demiki rig this is simply just a small jig head with a small minnow like bait on there and Z-Man makes one of the absolute best baits to put on the back of that jig head and that is going to be a Z-Man Streaks Real quick, those of you guys that are new to the channel, don't be afraid to subscribe to follow along with the content I have coming out every week but let's dive back into the Demiki rig so the Z-Man Streaks is a small minnow-like bait. It make, they make it in a 3 and a 3 quarter inch and a 5 inch. So you can target whichever bait size you're around and upsize it or downsize it according to that. And all it is is a small minnow-like presentation that is really non-invasive to these fish and it imitates a bait fish extremely well. Because what happens is when those fish are out there suspended, they're really just chasing bait fish and they're trying to just stay with those schools. And so what you end up seeing on your graph is you see these big balls of bait with little dots where the bass are at. And what happens is they follow along these schools and every now and then they'll bust through there and they eat the dying bait that comes down through because they knock them or they, the bait fish just die. And so what this Demiki rig does is you'll cast it out and it'll just sort of pendulum or you can slowly reel it over top of their heads. A swim bait also works really, really well with this. But you just get that perfect lifelike imitation as that tail is kind of waving and that bait is falling through the water and they don't think anything of it. It works in super, super crystal clear water and even in dirty water. You just have to change the color of your bait to match it. The really, really important thing about a Demiki rig is the jig head itself. I've tried using a standard ball head and while you can get away with it, you really end up losing fish because what happens is that ball head will roll in that fish's mouth, which makes a lot of sense. It's a ball head and it rolls and what happens is you skin hook them in the roof of the mouth. And so you have them until they come up and make that first jump and it ends up popping right out of the roof of their mouth. I've seen it time and time again and it is a common mistake that even I make and it sucks when you lose some absolute giant fish. So the jig head that you're going to want to go with is more of a minnow style head that is keeled. And when I say keeled, I mean weighted heavier at the bottom than it is on the top and has almost a triangle shape or a rounded shape. Not ball head, but like oval round at the top. So that way, when that fish eats it, that bait can't turn over because that jig head won't allow it. And so you end up putting the hook straight through the roof of the mouth, which greatly increases your hookup ratio and puts every single one of those fish in the boat. So don't forget to like this video so that way we can keep it pumping out there so guys can learn how to catch suspended fish. And all the gear that I talk about in here will be linked below as always. So don't be afraid to check out those links so you guys can get the exact gear to go target those suspended fish. Now that we're on the topic of gear, let's talk about the rod, reel, and line that I use and how I'm going to fish it in order to get the most out of these baits. The rod is super, super critical. You don't want a super, super soft rod. You want almost a 
medium style rod. I like a medium fast and a 7 to a 7.6 depending on where I'm fishing and how far away from me I'm fishing. If I'm fishing for extremely skittish fish, I will throw a 7.6 to allow me to make longer casts. Whereas if I'm making short pitches, I'm going to be going with more of a 7 foot model. That'll just make me more efficient as an angler in order to catch these fish. Now the line that I'm going to use is Spin X Braid by P-Line in a 7 to 10 pound model because that thin line is going to cut through the water and give you the most action out of your bait. The heavier the line you use, the more it takes away from it and the more your line will have an arc in it and you won't be direct to that bait. I pair that braided line with a 10 pound P-Line Tactical Fluorocarbon Leader. Now you can go to a 7 if you're in super, super clear water and you can even upsize it to 12 if you really, really want to if you're around some giant fish. But the key is having that fluorocarbon leader to make it almost invisible to those fish. Probably one of the most other key components of this is going to be the reel. Because you're using forward facing sonar and you're casting this bait and looking for individual fish, what you need to do is have a 3000 series reel because what happens a lot of times is you make pitches and you can't really tell which way the fish is going so you end up having to reel back real fast and make another cast to try to keep up with that fish to get it in front of his face. So that 3000 series reel allows me to pick up that line super fast and make another cast. So how I fish this bait. How I fish this bait is almost like how you would fish a Sanko. You almost dead stick it other than you're going to close your bail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my forward facing sonar. I prefer Garmin Pan Optics. It's just what I started out fishing and I've really grown to love it and I know the settings of it. Hummingbird and Lowrance also make great options. So if you have that option, just learn it the best you can and go from there. But what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to get into these areas where there's bait fish present that these fish are suspended. I found them with my side imaging, my down imaging, spending a lot of time graphing on my big motor. Now that I've found those areas, I'm going to get on my trolling motor, put a lot of time in, just looking at my graph, panning my trolling motor around, and I'm going to use this in a 3 8 or a 3 16 model. I really don't go a lot heavier or lighter than that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make short pitches when I see those fish. So I'll see them and I'm either going to cast it out and slowly reel it over top of their heads or what I'll do is if they're in bait balls crashing through, what I'll do is I'll pitch it above them, close my bail, hold my rod tip and let that bait swing down through there. Because what that looks like is that looks like a dying bait fish that's just kindly cruising with the current. And the bite is going to feel just like if you're fishing a Ned Rig or a Sanko, it'll just feel a tick. And all you're going to want to do is just reel tight and lean on those fish. You don't have to jack them really, really hard. Because it's a big single hook bait, your hookup ratio is just like that of a jig. You don't need to crack them though because you're fishing that 7.1 medium heavy or that 7.6 medium or medium rod. You really just reel in and lean and that big single hook will do the rest of the work for you. So another great bait for catching suspended fish is going to be a jerk bait. At the end of this video, I'll have a jerk bait video link where I break down what I wish somebody would have told me about a jerk bait. It is a phenomenal tool for catching those shallower suspended fish. You really should check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.